and welcome to my channel. This is Nova Gnome Creations and I'm Nova and I'm so glad you decided to join me for this little pocket gnome tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this lovely little pocket gnome. I chose to do a Santa theme for this one but without the uh, pom-pom on the end and in any colors you choose you could do any theme you want. You could do a little woodland gnome, you could do it in brown, you could do it in Halloween colors, orange and black. You can really make this your own and go any way you want with it. So let's jump into it and let you know what supplies you're going to need to get started making your very own little pocket gnome. Well, you're going to need yarn. So the first thing that you're going to need is your color of choice for a body, your color of choice for a hat, and your color of choice for a beard and a skin tone for your nose. Um, and for the beard, we are going to be double stranding it, which you do not have to have more than one um, skein. You can double strand together two skeins if you would like to, and you could even do a fuzzy yarn and a non-fuzzy yarn. Um, or you can actually pull from the middle and from the outside and just off of the same skein. Also, the beard is not a very large part, so if you aren't able to do that, you could always pull some yarn out and cut it and then just work from both ends, which is actually what I did for one of my beards. So you will need a body, a hat, a skin tone, and a beard tone for your gnome. You'll also need a crochet hook. And I used a 3.5 millimeter hook with a worsted weight yarn so that my stitches would be nice and tight and you wouldn't see the stuffing through. And you're also going to need a slightly larger hook for when we double strand together the beard. Now you can do it with your smaller hook if you would like to, um, but I went up to a 4.25 for double stranding my beard and I was using a 3.5 for the body and the hat and the nose, so that is up to you. You're also going to need optionally a row counter slash stitch counter, some scissors will be needed, a yarn needle will be needed, and optionally a stitch marker, although I do highly recommend using a stitch marker. You will also need something to stuff your gnome with, so you can use polyfill, you can use yarn scraps, um, anything like that you would like, and optionally you will want a little pom-pom. You can get these at the Dollar Tree or like any craft store, any craft section, Walmart, literally anywhere. Um, and this is optional, but if you would like to make this into a little bit of a Santa hat style, then um, you can have this pom-pom to go on the top of your hat. And apart from that, the only things that you may want are the little stuffing tool that comes with your polyfill if you would like and possibly a hot glue gun if you would like to hot glue your gnome together. Um, some parts like the pom-pom, if you choose to do the Santa hat, you'll need to hot glue, um, but the rest of it you could actually choose to sew or to hot glue together. That is completely up to you and your preferred method of assembling your amigurumi. All right, so let's make a pocket gnome. Yarn of choice or whatever yarn you would like to use, um, and a 3.5 millimeter hook or whatever hook size you would like to use, we are going to start out by making a magic circle. I'll show you how to make a magic circle, but if you would like some extra help with this in a slowed down fashion, I have a uh, tutorial and I will link that in the description box below. So you're going to take your tail and you're going to put it in front of these two fingers and you're gonna wrap it around both of the fingers so that it crosses over itself. And then you're gonna take your hook and you're gonna slide it under the first uh, part of the yarn and you're gonna scoop up the second part. Make sure that's focused for you. You're gonna scoop up the second part and you're gonna pull it through. Then you're gonna rotate your hook so that it kinda forms a loop and then you're just going to yarn over and pull through to lock it in. 
And that is how you make your magic circle. After you have your magic circle, you're going to work over the tail and the circle part held together. And you're just going to do six single crochets. So you're going to go through the loop just like this. You're going to grab that yarn and pull it through so that you have two loops on your hook. Yarn over onto your hook and pull through both. And that is how you do a single crochet. So we're just going to do six of those in total. So now we have three, four, five, and six. And after you have six of those, you're going to close your magic circle. So the way that you close your magic circle is you grab this tail that you've been working over and you gently pull on it. We're not going to close it super tightly just yet, so we're just going to leave it, you know, with a little bit of a hole in it still so that we um, don't pull it so tightly that we have trouble finding our first single crochet. So if you uh, need any help finding your first single crochet, don't forget you can always just count back from your hook. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you, you know that you've done six single crochets, so if you need to, count back from your hook and you'll know that this is your single crochet. So we're just going to put our hook through the single crochet and we are going to work increases into each of these single crochets. And an increase is just two single crochets in the same stitch. And then you can put a stitch marker on that first one that you put in, that first stitch, if you would like to. You don't have to, um, just to keep track of how many stitches you have. And you know when you get back to your stitch marker that you have gone all the way around. So I put two stitches into that one single crochet. Now I'm just going to go to the second stitch and I'm going to put two single crochets into this stitch as well because I'm going to do an increase in each stitch, which means two single crochets in each stitch. So into this third stitch, I will put two single crochets. And into this fourth stitch, I will put two single crochets. And you're just going to do that all the way around. And at the end of this round, you'll have 12 single crochets. So, you know you did it right if you get back here and you hit your stitch marker and you have 12 single crochets. Now we can go ahead and we can pull on this tail to close up our magic circle tighter. So you're just going to grab on it and give it a nice little tug. There we go. And you'll kind of feel it really give. Um, and then that is going to be nice and locked into place. You're not going to get that open. Um, even if you try to pry it open, it's going to be nice and secured. So if you need to, uh, um, as you go along, if you haven't pulled this tight enough and you haven't gotten that nice um, pull to it yet, just keep giving it a little bit of a pull as you go and um, until you're happy with it and it is secure. So we're going to go ahead and move on to um, round three. You can go ahead and remove that stitch marker and into the third round we are just going to do a single crochet in the first stitch and then you can replace your stitch marker and we are going to single crochet increase all the way around and what that means is we've done a single crochet in this first stitch so into the second stitch we're going to do an increase And that's just going to be our repeat for the whole round. It's just going to be single crocheting into one stitch, increasing into the next stitch. So again, that's going to be single crochet and then increase into the next stitch. That means we put two single crochets into the same stitch. And we're just going to repeat, oops, we're just going to repeat that around, single crochet, increase. Okay, so we're just going to single crochet and then increase, single crochet and then increase, 
single crochet and then increase and we're just going to do that until we get back to our stitch marker and you should end on an increase and you should have a total of 18 stitches okay and if you have completed this correctly you'll end on an increase um, when you get back to your stitch marker and you'll have 18 stitches around so moving on to round four we are going to take our stitch marker out and we're going to single crochet into that first stitch and then you can go ahead and replace that stitch marker and our repeat for this round is going to be single crochet single crochet increase so we did one single crochet already and we're just going to do one more single crochet and then an increase oops and that is going to be our repeat for the round so one single crochet one single crochet and increase in the third stitch one single crochet one single crochet and increase and we're just going to repeat that all the way around until we get back to our stitch marker and you should be ending on a d or on an increased stitch and you should have 24 stitches in your round so for round five we are going to go ahead and we're going to remove our stitch marker and you're going to want to make sure that you have your work facing so that this is the outside and the side with your magic circle tail is the inside and the reason that I'm specifying that is because we're going to do some back loop only stitches so back loop only stitches are the loops that are furthest from you we normally work under the whole stitch which is comprised of these two um, pieces of yarn that kind of look like a V shape right here or right here and normally we work under both of them if you're working under only the back loop you're going to only work under this one that's furthest from you because this is your back loop so we're just going to do a round of back loop only single crochets. So to do a back loop only single crochet, you're going to only go into the back loop and you're just going to do your single crochet like normal. So you can go ahead and put a stitch marker back into that first stitch if you would like to. And then we're just going to continue around doing back loop only single crochets. So back loop only and just your regular crochet, your regular single crochet. And don't mind if it looks a little bit gappy as you go, it will um, not look like that the further that you get. Um, so go ahead and do back loop only single crochets all the way around and make sure that you're having this side without the magic circle tail facing you because this is the bottom this is the outside of your work and you want to be making sure that you're working in the back loop only so if I had it facing the other direction like this with the magic circle tail facing me you see that the furthest stitch from me would actually be um, the other stitch so make sure that you have it facing the right way before you uh, pick your back loop only Okay, and just continue all the way around until you get back to your stitch marker with back loop only single crochets. You will have 24 stitches since we aren't adding anything. We're gonna have the same amount of stitches as we did on our last row. All right, and when you have gotten all the way back to your stitch marker with your back loop only um, single crochets, we are just going to remove our stitch marker and we're going to begin to work in a spiral doing single crochets all the way around 
And we're going to do nine rounds of single crochets. So if you have a stitch counter, um, you can pull that out and you can just keep track of doing nine rows in here. Or you can um, keep it in your head, you can write it down, uh, you could put it into a calculator or a note on your phone, whatever works best for you, just to keep track until you've gotten nine rows all the way around. Um, you don't need to slip stitch at the end of your rows or anything like that. Uh, just keep going around and around until you hit your stitch marker and take it out and that will count as one round and then uh, start crocheting again and put it back in. Um, and we're just going to keep doing that until we have done that nine more times. So when you've got nine rounds, uh, go ahead and meet me back. So you can pause this video while you crochet around nine times. And once you've finished your nine rounds, it should look a little something like this. Um, it should kind of have a cup uh, sort of appearance to it. And we are just going to remove our stitch marker. And now we are going to be doing a little bit of decreasing. So we're going to do single crochet in the first stitch and replace our stitch marker. And then we're going to do one more single crochet. And then we're going to do a decrease. Now, for amigurumi, I like to do an invisible decrease. And the way that you do an invisible decrease is you work under the front loops only. Now, if you remember when I was showing you before about the back loops only, it was this stitch furthest from you. Well, or this, uh, sorry, this half of the stitch furthest from you. Uh, front loop only is going to be this stitch half of the stitch closest to you. So instead of working under both of these, we're only going to be working through this one. And the way that we're going to do it to do a decrease, which is where we take two stitches and make them into one stitch, we are going to grab this first stitch's front loop and put our hook through it. And then we're actually going to go straight into that second stitch, just the front loop again and go through it as well. So we're through both of those stitches now. Then we're going to yarn over and we're going to pull through both. And then we're going to have two loops on our hook. We'll yarn over one more time and we'll pull through both. And that's how you do an invisible decrease. So the repeat for this round is going to be one single crochet, one single crochet, and then a decrease. So one more time to show you the invisible decrease, you're gonna go through just this front loop with your hook, and then you're gonna go through just the front loop of the second stitch with your hook, not yarning over or anything in between. Then you're gonna yarn over and you're gonna pull through both so that you have two loops on your hook, yarn over again and pull through both. All right, and then we're just going to repeat that around. So repeat around one single crochet, one single crochet, invisible decrease. And you're going to do that until you get back to your stitch marker. And as you get back to your stitch marker, you should be ending on a decrease and you should have 18 stitches around. All right, and on to row 16 of the body. We are almost finished. We're going to just do one single crochet into that first stitch. And then we're going to replace our stitch marker. And then we're going to do a decrease. And same as before, we're going to do an invisible decrease going through the front loop of the first stitch, the front loop of the second stitch, 
yarning over and pulling through both and yarning over and pulling through both. And that's actually just going to be our repeat for this round is one single crochet and then an invisible decrease. So you're going to repeat that all the way around until you get back to your stitch marker and you should have 12 stitches at the end of this round. When you get about halfway around, you can go ahead and stop and go ahead and put some stuffing in there. So you can stuff it as far up as you'd like. And then when we finish um, this round, you can add some more stuffing and there's only going to be one more round. You can pull on your uh, crochet hook and pull your loop like this if you'd like to so that you can take your hook off for the moment. There's only going to be one more round after this, so um, you can add your stuffing however you like at any interval, but I'm just going to go ahead and add mine now while I've still got a pretty good sized hole, and then probably at the last minute on the end, I will, you know, add any extra if I would like to top it off. So just go ahead and stuff it nice and firmly. And you can stuff to your personal preference. I like to stuff mine nice and firmly so that they hold their shape well. Um, I feel like they look a little bit neater. Um, and that's just how I prefer mine. So you'll know that you're stuffing it a good amount if it's got, you know, a nice shape to it and it holds its shape well. Um, but you're not stretching it out to the point where like your stitches are just bursting um, and the, the stuffing is trying to come out. And this is why we use a smaller hook than our um, ball band recommends. So for example, my yarn recommends a 5.5 millimeter hook and I'm using a 3.5. Well, I use a 3.5 so that my stitches are tighter so that when I stuff it, you don't see any of that stuffing. So that's why we do that. All right, and you can go ahead and you can return back to single crochet and invisible decrease, single crochet, invisible decrease, single crochet, invisible decrease, all the way back around and you will end on an invisible decrease. All right, and as you make your way back around, you'll notice that you are getting a um, kind of cinch in going on so that we can close up the top and that is what you want. We actually only have one more round. So right now you should have 12 stitches. We're gonna go ahead and take out this stitch marker and we're just gonna straight up decrease all the way around six decreases um, so that we can turn those 12 stitches into six stitches. So what I recommend at this point is stuffing as you go if you feel like you want more stuffing. Um, and when we get our six decreases, you can kind of stick a little stuffing in. It'll be a real small hole, but um, you basically at this point want to have your um, your gnome body to be stuffed um, because right now you can still stick your finger into this hole and, um, you know, work the stuffing into all the little cracks and crevices that you want it in. So we are just going to decrease... And uh, when you're doing the decreases on this round, it might be, you know, it might feel a little tight because, um, you know, we're getting really close to the end, but just do your best um, to decrease as far as you can. If you can't decrease all the way, that's okay. Um, just do the best you can and then I will show you how to close up your hole. So I did one decrease. I'm not even going to bother putting my stitch marker back in. I'm just going to count my decreases. So here's my second decrease. And then I'm gonna do my third decrease. And you might notice I'm putting my finger behind my stitches. Um, and that's so that I don't stick my um, hook into the stuffing and pull stuffing up through my stitches. So if you would like to um, do that, you can. It's just something I prefer to do. All right, and then I'm gonna do my fourth decrease. Scooping up those two front loops. All 
All right, and my fifth decrease. And only one more decrease to go. So after this decrease, I'm gonna really make sure I'm happy with my stuffing because I only have the tiniest little hole right now and um, barely can even get stuffing in through that hole. So if you buy um, polyfill that comes with the stuffing tool, AKA this little stick, um, this would be an opportune time for you to use that if you are wanting to add any stuffing um, to the very tip. You're just gonna wanna do a little bit at a time. And if you're happy with your stuffing, then uh, you don't need to do that. But I'm just gonna add a little bit more. And I know it looks like a lot, but the stuffing, uh, it really squishes up. And so it always, you always look like you need, you always looks like you're using more than you need to. You use a surprising amount of stuffing in Amigurumi. And I'm actually gonna put even a little bit more in there. This is gonna be the head of our gnome. So the very top of this is actually going to be under your gnome's hat. So if that knowledge helps you um, with deciding how much you'd like to stuff it, then there you go. So just go ahead and stuff it until you're happy with it. And then I'm going to go ahead. And you can always massage your stuffing. You can roll it between your hands. You can kind of press down on it and squish it um, to, you know, shape it the way that you want to. I recommend adding a little stuffing at a time um, in there so that it's more um, malleable to the shape that you'd like it to be. Um, and then once you've done that, you can go ahead and put that last decrease in. And then we are gonna want our darning needle for the last step of the body. Okay, so we've got that and we are just going to take our scissors. We're gonna cut our yarn, but we're gonna leave enough of a tail so that we can finish closing up our body. And then you're gonna want your darning needle and you can go ahead and just pull up on your hook so that it pulls this loop out. And then you can thread your darning needle with the piece of yarn that you just removed. And once you've done that, we're gonna close up this hole. Now, the way that we're gonna close up this hole is we're gonna go under the front loop only in each stitch around. So remember, you have six stitches. So front loop only, one. And don't pull it super tight, just pull it very gently. Two. three, four, five, and six. Front loop only. And then when you've got that all woven into those six front loop onlys, make sure this is focused for you. You're just going to give a tug on your yarn and it will cinch up that hole for you. You can just give that a nice little tug. And then once you're happy with that, you can go ahead and weave in your yarn tail. So there's no specific way that you need to weave this in. Um, I'm just gonna weave it around a few times to kind of hide it inside of the body. And then I'm going to um, be finished. So, do it however you would like to, your favorite way of weaving in your ends. Um, with amigurumi, it's really easy to just kind of stick it in like this and pull it out through a further away point and then gently pull so that you get rid of that loop. And then you can just take your scissors and you can cut right up to the body like that. And then you can just, you see how you can see where we came out right there? If you just give it a little squeeze massage it a little bit, completely gone. And then you have no yarn tail and you have finished your body. And that is how we make the body for our pocket gnome.
All right, and moving right along, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start our hat. You're going to want to grab the color of your choice for your hat and your hook. So I am sticking with a worsted weight yarn and a 3.5 millimeter hook. You can use whatever you would like to use. And we're just going to start with a magic circle. We're going to wrap around our two fingers so that our yarn crosses. We're going to slide under this first loop, grab the second part, pull it through, turn, and then we're just going to do a little slip knot, little slip stitch, um, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> to lock it into place. And if you need extra help with that, um, don't forget that there is a slowed down version, um, tutorial version in my description box. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do five single crochets, making sure that you crochet over both the tail and the circle. So one, two, three, four, and five. So once you have five stitches, you can go ahead and you can grab that tail and you can give it a little pull. Don't pull too tightly yet. Just give it a little bit of a pull and then go ahead and <clears throat> go over to this first single crochet that we made and do a single crochet. Now, if you have trouble finding that first stitch, you can always count your way back. One, two, three, four, and five. So you know that you're at this first stitch of the round. Um, since this round has five stitches, if you count back from your hook five stitches, that puts you at your first stitch. And we are just going to do a single crochet into that first stitch. And at that point you can pull on your tail and give it a little bit of a uh, tighter closure there. Um, and we are just going to do a single crochet in all five stitches around. So we've got one in our first stitch. Go ahead and do a second single crochet and then a third single crochet and a fourth single crochet. And then lastly, we will do a fifth single crochet and that completes round two. So at this point, it's going to start, uh, your work is going to start to cup or bowl, and that is what we want, but you're going to want to make sure that you direct it, because depending on how you're holding your work, um, it may start to bowl the wrong direction. So for me right now, it is starting to cup up the wrong way. I want this yarn tail to be on the inside of my work, um, not the outside. Um, and that's because this side of my stitches is technically the inside of your stitches um, and of course you can do it however you want you want to there's no right or wrong way to crochet but this is technically considered to be the inside of your stitches so I want to kind of take my pointer finger and push up from underneath and kind of do it like I'm trying to make a little hat for my finger and just push and kind of roll it the other direction and there we go. So now we have it so that the um, work is kind of cupping up the other direction and our magic circle tails on the inside, which means our stitches are facing right side out. So for round three, we're just going to do um, another round of straight single crochets, which is going to be five single crochets again. So you can go ahead and you can move on. Make sure that you go to that next stitch. Um, and like I said, if you need to count back from your um, hook, you can. When it's this small, sometimes it's a bit difficult to tell where the stitches are. So you can just count one, two, three, four, and five. And then you can just go into that stitch. And we're going to work five single crochets around. So one single crochet. two single crochet, three, four, 
four. And lastly, five. So I know our tail is kind of in our way. Um, we're gonna push that inside of um, our hat. So at this point, if you're able to, you can start to kind of direct the tail down into there. Um, just as a little bit of light stuffing, I'm just using a stuffing stick that comes with the polyfill. Um, mine has a little dried hot glue on the end from a project past. <laughs> and uh, that gives it a little bit of a gripping edge. So I just leave it. And my tail is a little bit long, so I'm just going to trim it. Don't trim it too short, but um, if you've got a uh, really long tail like I did, then you can give it a little bit of a haircut. And there you go. Now it's out of your way and tucked in. If you aren't able to tuck it in at this point, just do a few more rows and you should be able to tuck it in and get it out of your way. And it can act as a little bit of stuffing. All right, so on to row four, we're going to do single crochets in all of our stitches except the last stitch. So we will be doing an increase in our last stitch. So we're just going to do one, whoops, did I get under one loop? We're going to do one single crochet. Two single crochets. Don't mind my little tail trying to pop out there. <laughs> Three single crochets. Four. And in our last stitch, we will do an increase. So in our fifth stitch, we will place two single crochets in the same stitch. Now, you can start to add a stitch marker if you would like. Um, the only reason I haven't is this is a really small piece to work with and my stitch marker is pretty much the same size as the piece I'm working with at the moment. So I was waiting until it gets a little bit bigger, but that is completely up to you. If you don't um, you know, want to risk it, you, you wanna keep count, and have your stitch marker or you don't want to have to keep count um, even with just five stitches or now six stitches um, then that is totally fine and you can put your stitch marker in. So now we are on row five and we are just going to do another round of single crochet all the way around. So we're going to do one two three, four, five, and don't forget we now have six stitches because of our increase, so six single crochets. And that puts us at round six where we're going to do a single crochet increase and we're going to repeat that all the way around which is going to be three times and that will give us a total of nine stitches when we are done with the round. So just going to alternate between single crochets and increases in each stitch. So single crochet and I'll go ahead and place a stitch marker in here. In my second stitch, I'm going to do an increase. Pull some yarn out of my skein here. <clears throat> and then in my third stitch, I'm going to do another single crochet. And I'm going to follow that up with an increase. After this increase, you should have two more stitches remaining, 
and you're just going to repeat that pattern of a single crochet and an increase and you'll end your round right before your stitch marker or at right back before that first stitch um, you will end on an increase so there's my single crochet and in my last stitch I am just placing my last increase Oops. Alright, and that gives us nine stitches all the way around. And moving on to round seven. On round seven, we are just going to do a straight up single crochet round. So you can remove your stitch marker if you would like to, if you have one in there. And pop that first single crochet in. And replace your stitch marker. And we're just going to single crochet all the way around. And if you are counting, that is going to be nine single crochets. So two, three, four, five. six, seven, oops, eight, and nine. Now that you've finished round seven with your nine stitches, we will go ahead and pop our stitch marker out to Taru No. And now that you've finished round seven with your nine stitches around, we'll go ahead and pop our stitch marker out and put a single crochet into that first stitch and replace our stitch marker because for round eight, we will be doing two single crochets and an increase repeated three times. So we started out with one single crochet. We're putting in a second single crochet into that next stitch. And then we're doing an increase, which is two single crochets into this third stitch. And then you're just going to repeat that same pattern two more times of a single crochet, a single crochet, and an increase. Single crochet. single crochet and into that last stitch before the end of our round an increase <clears throat> and that finishes round eight and puts you at 12 stitches so for round nine you're going to go ahead and pop that stitch marker out put your first single crochet in and you're just going to put your stitch marker back in and single crochet all the way around so you get back to your stitch marker so this is just a straight up single crochet round um, for round eight, right? No, nine, sorry. And you're going to have 12 single crochets in total. So if you're just counting, then you have 12 single crochets to do for this round. And when you get back to your stitch marker, you can go ahead and pull that out. And for round 10, we're going to do three single crochets and an increase repeated around three times in total. And that's going to be 15 stitches at the end of our, of our round. So go ahead and put your single crochet back into that first stitch and put your stitch marker back. That was one single crochet. So now we're going to do two more. And then we will do an increase. 
and you're just going to repeat that two more times until you're back to your stitch marker and you will end on an increase. And after round 10, you'll have 15 stitches. You can go ahead and pop that stitch marker out and put your first single crochet in. And for this round, we are going to do single crochets all the way around, a total of 15 single crochets until we get back to our stitch marker. All right, and as we get back to our last stitch of 15, puts us back at our stitch marker, and we can move on to round 12. Go ahead and remove that and put your first stitch in. Oops. And you can put your stitch marker back into that first stitch. So for round 12, we're going to do four single crochets and an increase and repeat that three times. So we have one single crochet already in here. We're going to go ahead and do one single crochet in the next stitch, a third single crochet in the next stitch, a fourth single crochet, and then we're going to do an increase. And that'll be your repeat for the round. So you're just going to do three sets of those in total. So go ahead and work up another set of four single crochets and an increase. And then work up one more. And that'll put us back at our stitch marker and we will end on an increase. All right, ending on an increase. And that puts us at 18 single crochets all the way around. If you would like to count them, you can. And then we're going to move on to round 13, and we're just going to do single crochets all the way around in all 13 stitches. So you can go ahead and crochet back to your stitch marker after you replace it after that first stitch. Or you can count to 13, or you can do both. Totally up to you whatever you feel most comfortable with and meet me back when you have your single crochet round done. Okay, so when you make it back around after round 13, you will have 18 stitches around. You can go ahead and pop your stitch marker out and we're gonna do some front loop only single crochets. So if you don't recall, when your work is facing this way and your hook is closest to you, your front loops are the loops closest to you all around the outside, which means these are your front loops. Normally you work under both of these and that is uh, what you work under to do just a normal single crochet. And to do a front loop only single crochet, we are only going to be working under this front loop closest to you around the outside. So we're going to do a whole round of just front loop only single crochets. So insert your hook under your front loop and then just do a single crochet per normal and you can replace that stitch marker. So round 14 is going to be front loop only single crochets 
all the way around and that will give you the same count as last round which was 18 stitches. So when you get back to your stitch marker or you have your 18 stitches, go ahead and meet me back. All right, and when you have finished round 14, you will have 18 front loop only single crochets. You'll have a little bit of a ridge on the inside in here, and you know that you did your front loops only correctly if you have that. Those are just your unworked back loops. And we can go ahead and we can pop that stitch marker out. For this round, we're just gonna do some increasing, normal increasing and in, you know, the whole stitch. So going through the whole stitch, uh, we will do an increase in each stitch around. So there is my first increase and I'm going to put my stitch marker into the first single crochet of that increase. And then I'm just going to uh, increase all the way around in each stitch and then I will meet you back. <clears throat> After you've increased in each stitch, you will have a total of 36 stitches. All right. And when you get back around, you're going to have a nicely forming edge here and you're going to have 36 stitches now. We are just going to do a simple single crochet round in each of those 36 stitches. So you can go ahead and pop your stitch marker out and put that first stitch in and then you can just single crochet your way back to your stitch marker. And once you've worked your way back around, go ahead and remove your stitch marker, place a single crochet in that first stitch again, and go one more round of single crocheting in every stitch for a total of 36 stitches, and you will have finished your hat. Great! And once you have finished round 17, you are done with your hat. So we'll go ahead and we'll remove our stitch marker. And you can slip stitch into this next stitch and cut your yarn, but leave yourself a little bit of a tail. And grab your darning needle. So go ahead and take your hook and pull up like this so that you can remove that yarn. You can give it a little tug <clears throat> and then thread it onto your darning needle. otherwise known as a yarn needle. So what we're going to do is try to make this edge look a little less jarring. Um, and the way that I do that is I turn my work sideways like this. Let me make sure it's got you nice and focused. So I turn my work sideways and then I go under half of the um, stitch and pull up through the middle and then I do the same thing on the other side for the next stitch. Go up through half of the stitch, pull up on the middle, and then I'm going to go um, back the way that I just came going through the other side, um, like the top half of the stitch instead of the bottom half. This is unnecessary. You don't have to do this. This is just how I like to try to even out the difference between um, the ends so that it doesn't look like that's where you stopped. <laughs> and then I'm just going to weave in my tail a little bit. So I'm going to go back into where I did my slip stitch then I'm just going to kind of weave my tail in through some of this yarn, kind of sticking around the brim still, just trying to thicken up that area where we finished off. And you can uh, <clears throat> add as little or um, as much as you would like to your brim to make it look a little bit more even if you would like to. Um, I just like to do this when I'm slip stitching off at the edge of a hat um, until I'm happy with it. And then once I'm all happy with my edge, 
I'm just going to weave my tail in on this bottom side of the work under the brim of the hat. Just going to catch my needle through some of these fibers and direct my tail up through fibers, weaving it in and getting it to like the center of the hat where it's going to be nice and hidden and I don't have to worry about a tail popping out. That's just the, my personal preference of how I like to do it. You can weave in your tail however you like to weave in your tail. But I'm just showing you the way that I like to weave my tails in. Okay, so now I'm like kind of in the middle of the hat and that is perfect because I can just do this and boom, my tail is now woven in and hidden. And that is the hat for your pocket gnome. Next up, we're going to make our nose. So go ahead and grab your skin tone Any yarn color. that you would like. And we're going to start out with a magic circle. And we're only going to be putting three stitches into it this time. So yarn um, tail in front of these two fingers and yarning around to form a crisscross. And then you grab your hook and go under grab this loop and turn and then you're just going to yarn over and pull through and remember that that does not count as anything that is just your magic circle that doesn't count as a single crochet or a stitch of any sort so we're going to work over our yarn tail and our circle at the same time and we're going to do three single crochets so it's going to be pretty compact. So once you've got your three single crochets in here, you can go ahead and tug on that tail. Don't pull it too, too tight because you want to be able to get into that first stitch. So you can count back if you need to keep track. One, two, three. And that will show you where uh, your first stitch is if you don't know. And then you're just going to put your needle or your hook, sorry, through this first stitch and this is going to be an increase so we're going to work two single crochets into that stitch. I've got one single crochet in that first stitch and now I'm just going to put a second single crochet in that same stitch. Okay and then we're going to move on to the second stitch and we're going to work an increase into it as well. So one and two single crochets, working on making sure I keep this cupping the direction that I want it to. And then in our last stitch, we're gonna work two single crochets. Okay, and at this point you should have six stitches since we uh, worked an increase into our three stitches. Um, so at this point, we are just going to do two single crochets and then an increase. So make sure you know where that first stitch is and count back if you need to. And you're just going to put a single crochet into that first stitch. And keep it cupping the right direction as you go. So that was one single crochet. And into the next stitch, one single crochet. And then we're gonna do an increase in the next stitch. So two single crochets in the same stitch. And then we're just gonna repeat that. So one single crochet in the next stitch, one single crochet in the next stitch. and an increase in the final stitch. And the last round is just going to be single crochets and that's it. That's going to be our nose. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, and eight. And you can go ahead and you can tuck that magic circle tail down into your little nose and it can act as your built-in stuffing. Moving right along, we're gonna go ahead and start our beard. Uh, first, I'm gonna demonstrate how to do it with one strand being a fuzzy yarn, and then I will do it with both strands so being just regular So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start yarn. by making a slip knot. And we're just holding these two strands of yarn together, and I'm gonna slide that on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to chain. Um, let's see. Let's chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And we're gonna skip the first chain that is right next to um, the loop that's on our hook and we're going to slip stitch into the second one from our hook. And then we're going to work a half double crochet into the next stitch. And then we're going to work a double crochet into the next stitch. And into that last stitch, we're going to work a triple crochet, which is the same as a double crochet, but you're going to yarn over your hook two times before going through and then pulling up your loop. Then you'll yarn over and you'll pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over a third time and pull through two. And that is going to give you a nice little triangular shape. And once you finish that um, triple crochet and you've got this beautiful little triangle working up, we are just going to work all the way around the circumference of this triangle. Well, I don't know if you'd call it a circumference since it's a triangle, but you're going to work all the way around the outer edges of this triangle. And we are going to do single crochet around the um, triple, chain one, single crochet around the triple again chain one again and single crochet one more time for a third time and chain one again then you're going to turn your work and you're going to be working down the side of it of your work so go ahead and put a second chain and then go down to the side of your double crochet and uh, single crochet into it and you can work over these tails if you would like to. Chain one, single crochet into the next stitch. Chain one. single crochet into the next stitch, chain one, and then if you would like to you can go ahead and cut these tails that you've been working over because they are nice and woven in for you. And you're just going to single crochet into the very tip of the point of your beard chain one and then flip your work and go over and try to find the other side of those stitches and single crochet 
chain one and you're just going to continue your way back up this side and it's pretty forgiving if you think you're missing the actual stitch pieces um, as long as it looks good that's all that really matters so if you're going in between stitches um, or something like that you know every now and then that's totally fine so we're just going to single crochet and chain one again and going into that next spot and then we'll do one more chain and we're going to actually chain two here at our corner and we're just going to slip stitch back to our first single crochet that we made uh, for going around the edges. And that gives us a, a very nice fluffy beard. You can go ahead and cut your yarn. <clears throat> and you can pull on your hook so that you pull out your yarn. And there you have it. And now you can use your darning needle and you can kind of weave in your tails and um, you can use them to kind of close up that little bit of a hole in the middle next to the triple crochet um, just to make it look a little bit neater. What side am I going to want as the front? With this fuzzy um, yarn, actually the back side might be what I want to use. Let's see. Yeah, I think I'll use that back side um, for this fuzzy yarn. So I'm just going to go ahead and work my way down this front side, which normally I would try to work on the back. Um, although I don't think you'll see um, the stitches really with this fuzzy yarn. And making sure I don't pull too tight because I don't want to fold that corner over. But just going to seam up these two stitches, the double crochet and the triple crochet, um, and just give them a little bit of a connection more than they had, just so that there isn't any gaping here. And at the same time, I'm also weaving in my tail. So if you're gonna sew this onto your gnome body, rather than um, hot glue it onto your gnome body, make sure you leave a long enough tail at this point to um, do that. But if you're not going to, if you're just going to hot glue it, you can weave this whole tail in if you want to or weave it in until you're happy with um, how it's looking and you can just trim it. And make sure you trim it so that the tail is um, on the back side that you're going to be putting your glue on or, um, you know, if you would like to cut it and, re and reattach with new yarn to sew it on. Um, either way, just make sure that that tail is on the back side so that you don't see it. just like so. And now we have a gorgeous little beard for our gnome. Okay, and just to make sure this is accessible um, to everyone, if you do not have fuzzy yarn, I am in the process of getting the beginning uh, end of this yarn and the uh, middle end of this yarn. That way I can do a double stranded together version um, without fuzzy yarn. So if you have a skein of yarn um, or a ball of yarn or anything, um, if you want to double strand it, you can double strand it with itself even. Just pull out enough of it. Um, so I've kind of just got like a little pile of yarn and I'm working from both ends of the little pile of yarn. So, or you can double strand together, you know, from two different skeins if you have two different skeins or two different colors, whatever you like. So I'm not really going to explain exactly um, what I'm doing. I'm just going to try to go through it real quick and sort of briefly um, touch on it because I'm only doing this a second time just to make sure that it looks good with um, no fuzzy yarn, just in case you don't have fuzzy yarn. So after making our slip knot, we chained five, four, five, and then we slip stitched into the second stitch or second chain from our hook half double crocheted into the next stitch double crocheted into the next stitch 
and triple crocheted into our last stitch. So this will also help you to see a little bit better what I'm doing since I'm not using fuzzy yarn this time. So here was the little base triangle that we had and then I just had us chain one single crochet around that triple crochet, chain one single crochet around the triple crochet, chain one and do a third single crochet around that triple crochet and then we chained two for the corner turned our work sideways and started to work over these tails and did a single crochet into the side of that first stitch chain one single crochet into the side of the next stitch chain one single crochet again down the side Oops, I think I lost one of my double strands there. Chain one, and I'm going to go ahead and cut these two tails that I woven over or worked over. Uh, and then I'm just going to do a single crochet into the very tip of my triangle, and then I'm going to chain one again and I'm going to start working my way up the other side. So single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one. So like I said, this isn't like an exact science. You can just kind of do this um, in the way that looks best for you. Uh, and I'm just kind of sticking my stitches where, um, you know, they want to go to the best of my ability. Uh, and then once we get back up here, we're gonna chain two again because we're at the corner and then we're gonna slip stitch in to that first stitch that we had made. And then it looks like this, which is exactly what I was hoping for. We'll go ahead and trim our yarn again, grab our darning needle, pull up on this, and then we can weave in our tails and simultaneously, connect together the um, middle a little bit better where that triple crochet and that double crochet meet and they get a little bit gappy. So I'm very happy with how that worked up. I'm gonna have to put these two strands through here separately. Um, I just wanted to make sure it worked um, not using a fuzzy yarn also just uh, for accessibility. I wanted to make sure that people that didn't have fuzzy yarn um, that this beard still worked for them. So I am going to pick my front. I think again, I might do the, um, well, do I wanna do the back or the front for this one? Honestly, I think both sides look good. The back has a little more texture, um, which I think can kind of lend itself to a beard. So you can just choose whichever one you prefer. I think I'll go with the back again. I think it lends itself to like a little bit more of a, a beard kind of texture. Hey, this kind of looks like the mouth on a Santa beard. So um, here's another option for you. Um, you could actually leave this open and it could be like a little mouth for a uh, Santa beard. You could even put your nose through it kinda. <laughs> well. That's an option for you. It's not what I'm gonna do, but uh, you definitely could do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and weave my way down a little bit like I did before. Um, I'm working into technically the front side, but it's gonna be the back side for mine since I'm using the other side. And I'm just gonna work on connecting this triple crochet and this double crochet together a little bit so that it doesn't have this gap going on. And I'm just going to weave back and forth doing that until I'm happy with it. And like I said, same as before, if you would like to use a hot glue gun, then you don't need to leave a really long tail. After this step, you can just cut it, um, leaving your little bit of tail on the side that you're going to be putting face down onto the gnome. 
Um, and if you are gonna sew it on, which you totally could do very easily, um, then you will want to leave a longer tail. That way you can sew with it. And boom, there we go. Very happy with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my yarn and my beard is complete. So you have two different options based on, you know, your preferences and what you have available. You could do a fuzzy yarn option um, and do like a fuzzier beard, or you can do a regular one. Um, either way, just double stranding together some yarn. And uh, these make some nice little fluffy looking beards. And to give you an idea of what it looks like, very nice. I love that. I actually may even prefer the non-fluffy one. All right, you have made it through all of the uh, creation process and now we just have assembly remaining. So I went ahead and worked in all of my tails uh, and I'm going to show you how to assemble with hot glue, but you can assemble this in your preferred method of assembling um, your amigurumi parts. So if you prefer to sew them together, that is completely um, optional to you. <clears throat> and you would do that very easily. You would just put this on here and, you know, work your darning needle in and out um, of the piece you're attaching and the body of the gnome and attach everything that way. If you need a little bit of help with that um, to know how to do it, I do have a uh, more detailed full length gnome tutorial for beginners where I go really in detail about everything I do. Um, and I will have that linked below. I also have other tutorials which will also be linked below. Um, but yeah, if you need a little bit more help with how to sew things together, check out the third video, uh, which is the assembly process of my other gnome tutorial. So for our little pocket gnome here, we're gonna go ahead and just jump right into it. So the first thing I'm gonna do, because I am a little rebel, I want to make this into a Santa gnome. So I have a little pom-pom here, and this is the only part that you will need to glue. Um, if you would like to sew the rest of it, you can, but if you would like to make a Santa hat with the little pom-pom, you will need to glue this. Um, I guess you could use like a needle and thread, uh, like a normal like sewing needle and thread and sew this on if you really wanted to, um, but you're not gonna be able to use yarn and a darning needle to um, attach this in a very, uh, very easy way. So uh, this is going to be super simple and super quick. All I'm going to do is come to the very tip of my hat and put a dot of hot glue. And yep, that's all you need. And then I'm just going to take my um, pom pom and squish it down onto there. And I'm going to hold my um, hat between my fingers like this and just push. And I'm just gonna sit here for a minute and hold it like this. Now, if you don't know, um, hot glue kind of melts the acrylic fibers of yarn and it makes it so that it really bonds together. They basically become one. Um, so you're not just hot gluing together uh, yarn when you use them or when you use hot glue, you're actually kind of bonding together the acrylic fibers. Um, and I would assume the same thing probably applies for this pom-pom. It is probably made of some sort of acrylic. Um, so hot gluing is actually very sturdy. If you don't plan on washing something, um, then you can totally go for hot gluing. I'm not sure how hot glue would hold up in the washer and dryer, but um, amigurumi, at least my amigurumi, I don't plan on washing them. I plan on keeping them nice and safe and clean um, because I don't want to wash things that are stuffed if I can help it. But honestly, I do think that they would probably be fine, you know, on the off chance they had to go through the washer or dryer, um, just as fine as sewing them together. Uh, and there it, and there we have it. There is how our pom-pom looks on our little Santa hat. And I think that is absolutely adorable. Now, if you wanted to, you could do a slip stitch round around the edges of this in like your fuzzy yarn. Um, and do like a little bit of a fluffy edging. That is totally up to you and optional. I'm not gonna do it on this one, but if you wanna take it a step further, you could totally do that. Okay, so the next step is gonna be to take our gnome body and we're gonna put the hat on it 
Now find the side that you would like to be the front. You know, there's always a side that you think looks a little bit nicer. So pick out that side that you think looks just a little bit nicer and grab your hat and pick out that side that you think looks just a little bit nicer and decide what you would like to be the front. So let me spin mine around a little bit here. I think I'll go with this way. My hat kind of curves a little and I think that's cute um, from the front. So you're gonna sit your hat on here to get an idea of where you're gonna place your nose and your beard. So putting your hat on here, you'll kind of see um, how it sits. And you're gonna want to have your nose be kind of under the brim when you attach it so that it does one of these numbers because you gotta keep in mind that the eyes of the gnome and the rest of the head is essentially supposed to be under the hat. Now, oops, <laughs> let's do that again because I just uh, popped it off. So putting this here, you can kind of get an idea of where you want your nose to be. And then once you have that figured out, you can hold your nose there and take the hat off. And that's gonna help you figure out where you wanna place your beard because we're gonna want our nose to overlap with our beard. So go ahead and put your beard on there, kind of uh, using the nose to give you an idea of where you're going to want it. And then I'm going to overlap mine like this so that part of it comes out from under the nose and part of it doesn't. But first things first, let's attach the beard. So now that I know where I want the beard, I know I'm going to have it go up to that line right there. So what I'm going to do is stick my darning needle into this line. And now I know that that's where I want my beard to go up to. And that's kind of centered with where I want my beard as well. Then we're going to take our hot glue gun, or if you would like to sew it, you can sew it. Make sure you have the back facing you. You might be able to tell it's the back um, based on whatever you chose that you wanted to be your back, um, where you, uh, you might be able to tell because you left that little tail. Um, if not, you can just look at the front and the back and decide which side that you like. I'm actually using the technical back side um, because I think that it looks, you know, more fluffy and beard-like. And all we're going to do and all we're going to do is put hot glue on our beard and we're gonna press it on to our gnome. So kind of line up that top part, just set it down gently and then you can go ahead and pull this out and then just push down with a good amount of pressure and let it um, meld onto there for a minute. And if you don't get all the way to the edges perfectly, that's fine, you can always kind of peel them back up a little bit and add a little bit of glue. But um, once you get this on here, this is where it's going and this is where it's staying. So um, make sure that you know where you want it before you start to attach it. All right, and the reason that I say just to hold it on there for a minute is just to make sure that you give that glue time to dry and really, um, you know, kind of melt the fibers together. Now I'm just checking my edges to see if there's any that I want to kind of pull back and um, glue down further. I think I got nice to the edges um, and it's, it's well attached, so I'm happy with that. Now I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with the beard, but with the nose. So I'm gonna figure out which way I like my nose facing the best and exactly where I want my nose to go. And this is also a good time for you to put your hat on. You can kind of play with it and see which direction um, you want to go with your nose placement. You know, it's uh, there's always gonna be a side that you like better as the top or the bottom, so figure that out. I think that that looks really good, so that's how I'm gonna do my nose. And I know I'm just putting it right there in the middle, and I know I want this to be the top. So I'm just going to put some hot glue on here. And now with a piece that's this small, my tip is 
put it towards the center and um, a little bit towards the edges. Don't mind if you get these, you can just pull them off. You can pull them off even after you've attached it, but don't get too close to the edge or you might have glue come out the sides when you're pushing down. So then find your middle, gently sit it on there so you can place it and then get it into position and press down nice and firmly and hold it for a minute. All right, and when you're done holding down your nose so that it gets nice and secured on there, you can remove your finger and just kind of fluff it back up since you were squishing it. <laughs> and there you have the face of your gnome forming. And I think that is looking super cute already. So the next step is going to be our hat. So figure out the way that you'd like your hat to face. Make sure you've got it facing the right direction and kind of line it up. Make sure it's nice and centered or however you'd like it. If you'd like it, you know, lopsided, that's up to you. And the way that I'm going to attach it is I'm gonna attach it kind of going over the nose in this sort of a fashion. And like I said, if you're sewing yours on and you don't know how to sew this on like this, um, I will have a link in my description to a more detailed um, gnome tutorial I did where I go through it really step by step um, so it's super beginner friendly. But this one is uh, not quite as um, slow and walking you through every single step so I'm not going to show um, every single detail. And I'm just going to hot glue this one together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this back and I'm just going to hot glue it in parts. So I'm going to come onto my hat and I don't want to get too close to the edge, same as before. I don't want it to um, come out the edges when I push down, but I'm just doing kind of a seam of hot glue and I'm only doing the first half of it so that I don't have to worry about it drying or me misplacing it um, while I'm trying to get my gnome figured out. And just very carefully put that down so that you know you're putting it where you want it. And then you're gonna push down nice and firmly, maybe put your thumb on the nose so that it stays still and push down nice and firmly on there and give that hot glue a chance to settle. And then we'll do the same thing all the way around. Um, I did about half of my hat, so I'll go back and I'll do the other half. Um, you can do it all in one swoop if you would like to just put your glue all the way around and just plop her on there and push down. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I got that kind of precision placement um, and it gives me a little bit more control if I do it in sections. Okay, so now that I've got that done, I'm gonna come around to the back and I'm going to do the same thing. making sure I don't go too close to the edge again. And like I said before, if you um, decide that you want a little bit more hot glue closer to the edge afterwards, you can always peel it back and add that. But this gives you a little bit more control um, during the process. I'm just gonna grab the edges of this and pull down and push. And I'm just gonna hold them here for a minute and make sure that that really has time to bond. James Bond. <clears throat> and there you have it, folks. You have created an adorable little pocket gnome. And this gnome is about palm sized and it is done in a worsted weight yarn. So you don't have to use any tiny um, sport weight yarn and a tiny, tiny hook. Um, you can use a worsted weight and a 3.5 and you can get this little adorable pocket size gnome. You can do it in Santa colors. You could do it in Halloween colors. You could do it in, you know, your favorite colors or your, your basic gnome colors, um, like, you know, earth tones or whatever. Um, I would love to see what kind of uh, uh, customizations you guys come up with this, like what kind of colors you do it in. Um, and I would just love to see them. So in the description, I have my email if you'd like to email them to me. Um, and I also have Instagram if you would like to tag me. 
Um, and I also do gnome of the month on my channel. So if you make a gnome and you would like to send it to me and be featured in my gnome of the month video, uh, send that to me in an email and let me know that you'd like it to be in the gnome of the month video and let me know what name you would like me to use for you and I can feature you in my next gnome of the month video. See you next time.